If you want to be able to build this in Planet Zoo, then stick with me with my updated 2022 7 episode tutorial series. In this series we are going to cover the basic controls, landscaping, pathing, barriers, building, foliage and enrichment. And since many things have changed since 2019 when my last tutorial have been online, here's a brand new series you can build along. The park is available to download, but now let's begin. All right, in today's tutorial, we are going to talk about buildings. Now, buildings is definitely one of the most requested tutorials. In today's tutorial, though, it is going to be the very basic of buildings. If you guys are interested in a very advanced building tutorial with a lot of um, specific, uh, you know, techniques and stuff, I have something linked for you in the video where you can go to an advanced tutorial. In today's tutorial, it is very much for the beginners who have never been building in this game. And I'm going to start with one thing that is pretty obvious. Um, it's the way to go for those who play on a more casual level and who don't want to build piece by piece. You will go to this thing down here. This is the blueprints tab. That's gonna be your best friend. And in the blueprints tab, you will find prefab buildings that you can use for yourself in your zoo um, just the way you want to. Now, there are a couple of things you have to know. So on the left-hand side, you've got a, a sorting and the sorting is basically all. Then you've got your own blueprints in case you have created some, but if you are on the more casual level, you pretty much don't have them in here, but you will have them all in here in the Steam Workshop. This is what you can download from the Steam Workshop. And I've shown, I have some things that I have used uh, from my community quite a lot um, to show you how versatile you can use them. So just as a little example over here, um, someone made uh, this wonderful, kind of water thing um, for my Lost Aqualand series and this is a um, series of a little um, kind of uh, retaining walls that you can use for your water volumes. Very nice and you can use them all one by one or you can just use the building. Um, another wonderful example is uh, a wonderful fence that someone created um, and all these kind of things are like for example this wonderful sunshade. Um, so these things are just like as you can see you just take them and drop them down and boom they're in your zoo. Um, or like a wonderful little fountain over here that you can place down. Um, so that's a very quick way um, of, of creating your zoo. But there are two things you have to really pay attention to. So first of all, these do cost money. So if you play in franchise mode, um, obviously that's going to cost you some money. And since there are some people who tend to build with a lot of pieces, <clears throat> for example, that one over here looks absolutely fantastic, but it's going to cost you over 190,000 uh, in-game dollars. So that's not really something something for uh, the lighthearted, <laughs> you know, that's something you potentially don't want to do. Um, but then you can put down these crazy buildings, obviously, and use them in your own zoo. The second thing you have to really pay attention to is the following. Um, you don't have access to all of the pieces in the franchise mode. That means you have to research certain packs and search and certain things. And also, if you don't have all the DLCs, sometimes you can't have those pieces together simply because uh, you don't own all the pieces. So if I click on some of those things, you can see um, on the right hand side, you can see all the tags from the different packs that have been used. And I guarantee you that most of the pieces have nearly every pack. Even this simple fence, as you can see over here, has the New World set, the Planet Zoo set. Um, so even this has two. If you go in that one, you can even see base game, Indian, uh, New World. Um, that, that is something you have to keep in mind. And if you go to more intricate buildings, just as my, um, uh, you know, Australian, house over here you can see basically uh, everything is just checked in here so uh, yeah there is um, not a big chance that you can put them down at the beginning so make sure if you download them that you always keep in mind what you have researched and you have researched already but now let's move on with the actual building so in case you want to build yourself you go to the construction menu this is gonna be the place where you will um, find your playground so to say now when it comes to building there's one um, major uh, thing you have to know about the way how Planet Zoo functions. Um, the thing is uh, you have two different variants of uh, building. The first variant and I'm going to disable blueprints right away because you still have blueprints in that menu but you can disable them. Go via this tab over here just say blueprints off and it's going to show you only the pieces. Very helpful. But I'm going to go to walls and in the wall pieces segment you will notice that there is a little icon to the left hand side which almost looks like the hash key just uh, not tilt it. Um, so this means these pieces do work on a grid. So if I do take that one, you can see it comes with a six square grid over here. Um, the thing is you only 
um, will be able to use that thing on this given grid. Now with the Z key or the Y key, depending again on which keyboard you're using and in which zone of the world you are in, um, this will make this thing rotate by 90 degree. This is what you can do and then you can move this along the grid. You will have the chance to make the grid a little bit smaller if you need to. So you can move your pieces in a one meter increment and basically up and down in a very, very small step. As you can see, if you hold on shift, you can move pieces up and down. If you release the shift key again, it's gonna stay on the height. If you wanna drop it back down to the ground, you just press the shift key once and boom, it's gonna fall down to wherever you have your cursor post uh, put. Um, so for example, if I move it up again, put my cursor here and hit shift, shift again, and it's gonna reset it to where the cursor was on the ground. So that is just in the building, but there are also other pieces in here which do not have this icon, they have a different icon. And this icon over here, as you can see, the square, which is differently filled, is only going to show you the size of the piece. Now, this one, which only has one of the three squares filled, is the smallest available piece of this series. The second one is semi-filled and the fully filled one is the biggest piece of that series. Um, they only always come in three. And if you put these down, you can see the grid is gone. The grid is just gone. There's no grid anymore. And these pieces can be rotated, as you can see, completely free around 360 degree. In order to rotate them, I press down my Z or Y key again, uh, whatever you uh, have on your keyboard. Um, it is always the key that you rotate pieces with. That will always be the same. If you want to position that a bit more specific, you hit the X key. The X key will bring up this menu. This is the advanced move tool, as we call that. With this tool, you can move your piece along the three axes. If you have ever made 3D renders or you know played around in a 3D uh, program, you will know this by heart. If you press X again, it's gonna go into a 3D rotation mode. And in here, you guessed it, you can rotate that around every single axis that is available to you. Now you can rotate this in this direction, in this direction, and obviously you can also rotate this in any other direction, make the piece really go into the exact position. If you press escape, just as I did, the piece is gonna go back. Now, to make it all a bit more streamlined, you can also use different variants of positioning. Now, so for example, if I take this piece, on the right hand side, you've got a lot of toggles. I used to use the align to surface tool most of the times, because that will always align this to the surface that you point at with your mouse cursor. You can see that over here, I'm moving my mouse towards the wall and then it's gonna align to the wall. Now this hotkey is V on your keyboard. I really recommend learning that one by heart. V is the key to go because that's gonna help you to move it up and down. Very, 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 very nice. Um, so, you know, if I do rotate around the side, you can see now it's gonna do the same over here and even does position it in the right direction. Now, if you want to, for example, have that thing aligned right in the middle of this thing because you want to center it, you press the F key. The F key will always bring this to the center and you can see it also hit the position snap for you. Now, if you have position snap, it's gonna always position to the center of the given piece, as you can see. Very helpful if you want to build very specific easy houses and stuff, um, which I'm going to show you in a second. And then you also have the position rotation over here. That I don't know the hotkey off because I do use that so seldom that I have no idea what that is. But this one is useful when you have like, for example, the bicycle and the bicycle comes in three pieces, which is the frame and the two wheels. And if you want to put that together, it's not only going to align that with the piece, it's also going to position that in the right position. Now, if I do that again, you can see that it uh, still does the same over here because it basically has no given other method. But if you have that, for example, as I said, or with a car and you want to snap the wheels to it and the wheels are in a different way rotated, it's gonna always also do the rotation right. Now, I do keep that deactivated because that's one thing we don't want to. Um, random rotation and random rotation all is something we are going going to look at in the foliage tutorial because that's really not something you want to use during building. Um, it still is available as an option, but I'm going to leave that out for this basic tutorial. It's going to confuse you more than it, than it helps, so just forget about it for the moment. Okay, so we've set the ground here um, and I'm going to quickly show you how you can build relatively quick with using these position snapping tools. So I'm just going to delete all of it. Um, 
and we are going to go back to a building. Now, before we do so, I'm going to quickly give you a little insight on how the building itself works, because you have to understand the building group. Now, I'm going to go to all building pieces, and we are going to start um, with the wall. So you move to the wall section, and I'm going to go with the breeze block. Now, what I want to do over here, I want to build a simple building with a door, with some walls, a window, and a little roof. Now, I'm going to you know, I'm going to kick it off with the breeze block 4 meter. So you can see by putting this down, just pay attention now to the border of your screen. If I click down, you can see on the right hand side and left hand side, there is a yellow bar appearing and you see on the top right, there is editing group number six. This way is basically showing you that at the moment you are working inside of a building group. Now this is very interesting because inside of a building group your controls will change a little. Now if you put down certain walls as I did over here and then you press right click to disable the piece you are still in the group even though the uh, grid disappears. And now you have the function of hold and drag which is one of the most important things in the game because that way you can only select the pieces that are in your given group. I'm going to show you how I mean that because if I'm going to leave the group, I just press escape once more. Now you see the yellow border is gone and that is a group six. I highly recommend to name this. I'm going to name this house one. Um, I just recently started to do that more often because it really is helpful. And now I'm going to put down a second building. Um, therefore, I'm just using something else, just rotating this like this and I'm going to leave that group again now. So that's it. Now, if I do go here and drag my mouse, I'm just trying right now and it doesn't do anything. You can't hold down and select. Therefore, you have to use this tool, the multi selection tool. And then you can see this works again and select both objects. And you can see on the top right there, it says two objects. Now, I don't want this. I want to go into one of the two buildings and I'm going to double click this one over here. I'm highlighting this house number one, double click and boom, the grid appears and also the yellow borderline. If I do hold down and drag my mouse again, you can see I can even go over the other one on the right hand side, but it won't select this one because I'm not in this editing canvas. So that is very helpful. In, in case you are building, make sure to have your canvases um, separate from each other because that will make building so much simpler and so much easier. But now on that note, I'm just going to delete the other one and we are building this building. But to be a bit more serious, we are going to build the building um, in this place over here. As I just said, I want to have this place over here, a proper building. I'm not sure what kind of animal we are going to get in. I thought about gorillas maybe. You have seen that obviously from the intro. I don't know yet, but um, we're going to place this down. Now I want to have this aligned here with the pathway. Um, in order to do so, there are a couple of tricks how you can do this. Um, I'm going to do the easiest one. I'm just going to enlarge this for the moment. If you've seen how quickly I just copied that around, I'm just going to delete that again to show you. If you drag your mouse over this and you press Control and D, you will duplicate this piece and then you have the selection again and you can move that with your mouse and position that right next to it. So select that again, control D will copy basically the pieces that you have selected. So that's very easy selection and then copy uh, control D will copy things. This is very simple. Now, if I have this selected, I press escape once so that I'm out of the building because this will bring up the advanced move tool and now I can align this very properly. So I'm just going to bring this exactly to the border here, just making sure that it has a, a tiny little gap in between, moving that exactly into this position. There you go. And now from over here, what I do and I love to do is I'm just going to quickly um, paint out my main building frame. OK, so I'm just going to go this way and you can see, oh, look at that. There's like a little bit of an offset. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce my grid size and just going to bring this to the last point where it works. That, that, that over here is fine. Just making sure it all works. And then I'm just going to basically build this all the way so that I have a certain block in which the building will actually function. So this is my building. Just going to make sure that everything is fine so that I have a basic idea of my building. Look, that's fine. That's a fine block. And now I'm going to outline certain things that I want to have. So first of all, I think I'm going to pair that with a couple of wooden frames. So I want to have a guest view inside of whatever this is going to be. And so I'm going to delete those two and I'm going to bring a wooden frame in here. So that's what we are going to do. Now, I do obviously need something 
for the animals to go out and for the keeper to go in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to search for breeze because I know that this is the breeze piece I need. And so I'm going to put in the door of the breeze set. And I want to also have a wonderful um, way for them to go out. And therefore, I'm just going to use an archway and I'm going to use the roundish one. So why not over here? So that's what I'm going to do. There's one piece sticking in, so I'm going to move that out. And there you go. So that is very nice. The animals can go out here. The keeper can go out uh, go in here. Nice, and we've got a nice front here where the guest can have a view. Now, a couple of things. Um, since this looks a little bit boring, we're going to detail this right now. So first of all, we're going to do some uh, windows, for example. And now this is where the fun begins. Now, I do want to make this window very much to the top here. So just like some, you know, air, air venting things where you can have some air drin, air in. And then this is what you can do. And I still have F pressed here to make these things uh, align already in the center. I'm gonna use this trick right now to be very quick in building. So I'm gonna click here, click here, click here. Go to this side, I'm gonna click those two in the middle. Just go around here as well. And I want to have those two here again. And I want to have those to here again. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, I don't want to have them in the center. I want to have them higher. Now, how do I get them all higher at the same time and also at the same height? Well, I'm just gonna use the shift key, uh, hold down the shift key and then just click the pieces you want to select. There, That way you can select multiple pieces. And since these pieces are not grid pieces, you can press X and it's gonna bring up the advanced move tool. And now the funky thing is you're going to move the whole group along the axis and now you can move them all up and they will be all at the same height look at that how cool is this so this is this is very sweet so we have that building over here it's gonna look kind of nice you know and now we need to have some windows in here obviously and another trick is just double click in here and then you can also just type in window so make sure to use this search function to your advantage and we are going to go for a window now okay so we don't have a glass piece in here so instead of typing in a window we going to type in glass and that's going to bring up some glass pieces and I want some glass pieces that are not in the grid and I think I'm going to go with these and um, this one is a grid piece but I don't want to have a grid piece so I'm just going to use one that has no grid. Um, let's see that I'm going to go for a bigger one that's looking nice and unfortunately this seems to have no uh, position snap in here position snap rotation doesn't work I thought maybe it's gonna do it but not um, in order to make this still work properly you're just going to utilize this left hand piece it's gonna align you move that over and now another very quick tip is if you are going to rotate this piece now you can see oh I need to now really get the right angle that's not something you want to do. You want to move that on a given angle. And in terms of uh, having the angle snap, you can just grab the piece again. Make sure you grab the piece again. And then you are here, press X, and then make sure to the right hand side to click angle snap. I'm gonna hit space bar because that's gonna bring up the angle snap right away. And now you can set the angle on which you wanna make it rotate. I'm gonna go to fully 45 degrees because I want to go into the upright position. So it's just gonna be two ticks and then it's 90 degree rotated. And I'm gonna bring this in here, move that slightly back. So it's into the frame, sink that in, and then just one, two, done. Very simple, very effective. That makes a whole bunch of sense. And there, that way you're building a very simple frame really quickly. Now, as the tutorial is already quite a couple of minutes old, I'm going to make this very much straightforward for you now. So we have now made a lesson for basically all the basic buildings. I'm gonna do a bit more advanced building now, just a tiny bit so you can see how you can get a bit more creative with pieces and use some techniques in order to show you how building exactly works. Now, therefore I'm just going to enter the building again and I want to have a very nice looking roof on top here. I want to have this roof um, kind of a little bit swooping, you know, a bit more of an interesting shape, you know, nothing, nothing too boring looking. Um, and I think um, that I want to have like this a little bit, you know, tilted to that side so that the building gets a bit more depth and looks a bit more nice. But I do want to have the back side somewhat straight. Okay. So, um, this is kind of what I have in mind for this building so that we have just like kind of a rounded little roof to the front and then it just cuts back down and there's like a flat roof with a bit of an awning here that does cover the pathway in so that they don't get wet when they go there. So 
in order to do so, I'm basically building myself a blueprint. So I'm just going to take uh, this wall piece over here, like this. And one thing that I used to do quite often is I'm going to use a reference. And this is going to be a stuff person because that's the only reference we have uh, as a person over here. And since this game is most of the times super overpowered when it comes to sizes. You can see how weird that looks and how crazy tall that whole thing is. Now what I like to do is I'm just going to move that ever so slightly back in the ground so that it already saves a little bit of space. And what I do now is I'm gonna bring the roof here in front a little bit more down. So in order to do so, I'm just clicking back into the building and I'm gonna go and start with the guider, you know, because that's something that always helps. I'm gonna tuck that to the middle and I'm gonna bring this guider up and I'm gonna move this ever so slowly uh, above the window. Just gonna rotate that again, make it that way and just bring that a little bit down. This time around, I don't want the angle snap to kick in because that is just something I don't want over here. Just move that slightly up and change to the smaller piece to have a little bit more control of the shape. So I'm just going to do it that way, you know, just making sure that we have a little bit more of the shape in control. And then I think this is already the kind of angle I want to go for. Just gonna move all of it up, you know. There you go, very nice indeed. And I think this is kinda nice. And over here I want to cut back down. So what I'm going to do in order to have the piece safe, I'm just going to use this piece again. Uh, align that over here, bring it up. So just making sure that I keep the right angle, activate angle snap again, snap it around so it's the same angle, bring that up here. And that is my basic frame that I want to build with. Now, as you can tell, this unfortunately is now in the middle of this building. Um, so what we are going to do now, and this is a, a very neat trick I just recently figured out does make a lot of sense, is um, I'm just going to, first of all, copy just that frame because we will be, uh, we do definitely need this frame again later on. So I'm just gonna copy that, move that to the side. I don't need this at this moment, but I will need this later. So, but there's no roof on top of it. Um, I do want to actually use, I think I'm gonna use plaster for that this time around. So I'm gonna use plaster and I'm gonna use a simple plaster piece. And now I'm gonna use this uh, in order to have the same rotation. I'm gonna try to find the good snapping point as you can see over here. I'm gonna deactivate the snap rotation because that's something that is just annoying. But this way I can just align that pretty nicely over here. Just move that into the position, move it up a little. And from over here, we can basically make that a roof. And you can see already um, how this building comes a little bit more downwards. I will actually push that a little bit further in so that we have this as a design element almost. Um, but one thing I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna push this all the way over. So until this very point, um, and you're gonna see in a second why. Now I'm just going to follow the iron guiders we put down. Uh, just a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfectly fine because that is just the guidance I build and you won't see that later on anyways. So I'm just going to follow that a little bit like this, you know, very nice, very steady, and then bring that all the way up here, uh, just a little bit more tilt so that we just connect over here. Nice. And now what we also need is just kind of a, a very nice end to this roof. Um, so I'm going to copy that again, just bringing that down a little more. Um, yeah. I think that's a fine height. And what we're going to do over here, we're going to leave them some some room in there, you know, in which they can uh, have some, you know, good free air. Uh, and then I'm just going to add this to, whoops, I forgot the angle snap. So just like that again, hit spacebar, angle snap, move that down. So you can see this is a wrong tilt over here for whatever reason. So I'm just going to disable for this moment. Uh, I'm going to disable the position snap and just work with the align to surface because that is a bit more reliable in most of the cases. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to push that in here. Very nice. And just gonna move this down until we are at this point where we need this. Very nice. And we also need a small piece here for the top because I just don't want to have everything open. So that's pretty neat. That's pretty nice. So very cool. There's some airflow coming in. And the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to rotate this and finish that off over here to the side. There you go. There you go. This is the overhanging roof as I was just talking about, making that one also go into here so that that looks nice as well just like so. 
gonna use the smaller piece for that because that's gonna be a bit more nice looking there you go that's pretty much exactly what i wanted and um, from now on we can just uh, finish this off maybe we need a little bit of support over here i think it would be nice to you know just have that iron guider this this kind of bigger one from the back here just uh, grab that oops i didn't want to put that here by the way Control z and Control y does work obviously on building i did already explain that quite a couple of times so uh, hopefully you guys have noticed this by now um, and you can utilize that to your own favor now what we're going to do over here we're just going to add this thing as like a little bit of a support beam um i think that's just fine you know and there you go wonderful this is the basic roof frame. Now, before I go on building, I'm actually doing one thing. I'm actually going to now select all the roof pieces we just made as a blueprint. Just select all of them. And uh, once we've done so, we will do one specific thing, which is another little build-in trick that I highly recommend. You're going to press select the uh, split selection from group but first of all we're going to add this selection as well because remember that was a little bit of our placeholder and don't forget about your guidance wall over here i'll come to that in a second hit this button now boom so first of all it seems like nothing happened but in this moment you basically did the following you just split this selection from this building group now this building group again as you can see remains in here while this building group over here remains another group which we can now call roof and i thought that i just made a little mistake because there is a little piece that um i forgot to add so this is now also a single piece this is a group and now we can merge that back together just select that little piece select the group and then hit this wonderful tree icon with a plus symbol next to it, boom, and then this is one group. So the reason why I did this is because now you can basically adjust the position again. Now, because this is overhanging, you can now hit uh, or just basically go out of the building, hit the advanced move, and then just bring it all the way back into the position that you need. There you go. And from now on, it's pretty simple because now you can just click that one select everything, hit control and duplicate, then you have the grid as your helping guidance, and then you can build this. But there are a couple of little things I, sh I still want to do, and so I'm going to use the word planter here, and I hope that this brings up the piece. No, it doesn't. So does this, um, is this called roof tile with the grass on top? It isn't. Let's say grass. Oh yeah, that is the one. Conservation grass roof panel. That's the one I wanted. And again, this time around, I press F to bring this in the uh, center position. And then I'm just going to rotate from over here so that it is aligned properly. Just moving that up a little. So we have this wonderful grass roof over here. Just mo moving that in a little ever so much there you go i think that's gonna look a lot better at the end not sure if we could put have done on here as well maybe that would have looked good maybe not um but i want to also adjust the color real quick um i think the coloring of this thing could be like a green maybe like a green petrol kind of color just give it a bit less saturation yeah something like this seems to be fine to me and now i'm just going to select everything and then just easily copy these things uh, around as you can see now it also sticks to the height you can see the building is almost done and i'm just going to delete all of these walls because we don't need them anymore and now this comes into play why i did this because now you can just copy that in because that was missing on this side because you just copy that from one side and now it's finished so the only thing you need to do is basically close off the side here now you can do this several ways you could do that with the building and you can do that with single pieces now what we are going to try is we're going to try to do that with building pieces from that lower p uh, building and we are going to use the breeze blocks if we can um even though let's not go with those let's go with plaster because the plaster set also has some wall pieces and we might be able to make this a little bit more nice looking with those now what you're going to do is just make sure to look for the the given uh, piece that has the little hash in the corner which is then giving you access to the building and look at that that is just wonderful sweet that fits in and now you can see we need a different piece and there are some pieces that have a little uh, incline which is that one so we can use this one over here let's make the grid a little smaller oh look at that we can even maybe that use that other one yeah that's a lot better so there you go just move that up 
that looks pretty pretty damn good to me is there anything sticking through no it's not um, and then we can even try okay so there's something there's a little corner we have to fix um, but then we can also just move another piece up so you can see there's one mistake I made over here so let's bring this to the size that we need awesome okay so this is already pretty de decent and what we got to do now we got to copy that over to the other side now there is one thing that i want to mention real quick um sometimes the grid offset is not working properly this is basically because it would be that direction um so it's easier now to just use the same pieces on this side so i'm just going to do that real quick um it's a lot easier than to you know do the same stuff again and again so i'm just going to use the pieces again just copy them over and then find the right space where you just had them i think that's basically where i had it and now that is fine um so this is one of the limitations of the grid pieces but if you do do this again now with the non-grid pieces which is exactly what i'm going to show you now is you're just going to use this piece just bring that over and fix that little gap we have wonderful and then we're also going to fix this gap up here by just moving that one a little bit more in um, maybe we can even just tilt that a little more one and two nothing sticking out no that is wonderful and now you just select those pieces the outside pieces as you can see and if you now hit Control and x you're basically able to move them along the axis again and boom there you go the building is fully done we could even put some windows in so why not let's put some bigger windows in i'm gonna open up this one and i'm gonna open up this one and now we do the same trick again hit glass or like type in glass whatever you want to call that and i'm going to look for a different window i think this one could be really uh, really nice in here and what we're going to do right now is we are just going to um you know, oh, this is a grid piece, by the way. Sorry, there's a non-grid version of that one, which I quickly have to find. Where is, where is the one? I think it is that one. Yes, there you go. And this, as you can see, now it's aligned here to the roof. I'm just going to flick that over. And then I'm just going to find a good position. Look at that. This is sweet. This is just kind of, kind of framing it nice. Just making sure that we hit the frame nice and easy. Do the same on the other side. One and two. And you could also do that in the middle, but I'm going to go and just put in the guider and, you know, just going to put that thing in the middle um, just to finish that off. I think that looks a lot nicer, cleaner. Boom. There you go. The building is done. And I find the building looks really cool. Um, let's clean up the mess we did by just selecting that and deleting it. And now 32 minutes in. The building tutorial is done and I really hope that you had a very good insight into building. Um, I had a lot of fun. I hope you had too. And if this was very helpful for you, you may consider subscribing to the channel. I'm going to do more of these tutorials in the future. And if you feel super generous and that was super helpful for you, you can either become a member for 99 cents or you can use the super thanks, uh, which is a wonderful function of YouTube. Um, thank you also so much to all the others who already did this. Really helped a lot. And I really hope that we can have a monster computer for that soon to run your cemetery again i'm very very thankful for all of you supporting this i hope this tutorial was uh, very helpful let's move on to the next one which is going to be uploaded in a couple of days or if you watch that in a couple of months it's obviously already available in the playlist and so you can just skip to the next video have a good time stay safe and goodbye